are on site at the Gullard Junkanoo Festival at Brooks, Brook Green Gardens today. We were going to do a live cast, but the connection just was not going to allow that to happen. So I'm going to do the best I can to not put my fingers into the camera, which I've already done once. But we're gonna do some coverage, walk around, and then uh, maybe at the end, we'll wrap it up with something else. Let's go take a look and see what's going on at Brook Green Gardens today. The Junkanoo Festival of the people known as Gola. Do you want to go look at this guy? I'll meet you at the end. I don't want to. What's over here? Oh, let's take a look. You want to investigate? And this is red rice. Oh, okay. Thank red you. rice and pork. There's chicken and the, and the white rice. Thank you. So it's not technically bog, right? No, it's not a bog. No. Beans? Hi there. I would love some beans. All right. Thank you. Okra? Sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> a little ochre and a little rice. Yeah. You want one little piece of cake? Yeah, yeah please. <laughs> Sweet tea. Thank you. Sweet tea and water? Sweet tea, please. I'm deciding what kind of cake. Thank you. I was going to say, I was like, you, I, you wouldn't even put me to tell what you want. You know what? I'm going to give you a crown. Yeah. So yeah, you oh, could okay. Sweet tea or water? A different one, then you could decide. Oh, uh, not different. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. It's okay, this is my work. There we go. I guess you don't want me in your food. Hello, uh, I'm Caroline Harper and my business is called Tree Design Indigo. We are based in uh, Charleston, South Carolina and we are here today to show all of our indigo products. 
we grow the indigo near Charleston, South Carolina, in extract the pigment, and with that, I have a whole production of home and fashion accessories. Very cool. So what we're really working on is bringing back a revival of indigo that was originally grown here in the 1700s uh, by enslaved people, mostly from West Africa, who worked on plantations. And so the, the heyday of that indigo was from about 1740s to 1770s. Most of it was because this was a British colony. The British were paying a premium for indigo dye cakes. They were like blocks of powder dye. They were shipping those to England for the, the mills in England, like the woolen mills. And they didn't want to buy it from the French. The French were growing it in the West Indies and the Caribbean with enslaved populations there. So what we do is that we do grow uh, hundreds of plants on Edisto Island. We harvest those plants right around this time of year. So they reach maturity. They can be seven, eight feet tall. Um, and then we have to ferment them because the leaf itself does not produce blue. You actually have to leap, uh, create like a tea where we steep these overnight in a large trough of water. And then it gradually leaches out this kind of a, a neon turquoise blue pigment. And that is not indigo either. That's called indican. That's like a precursor to indigo. And what's missing to get it to go from that turquoise color to that blue color is oxygen. So if you look at sketches from the 1700s, enslaved West Africans were actually mixing it with cattle. But what we do is we use pumps to aerate the water. So it brings the oxygen in, and then it gradually settles to the bottom of the tank. We drain off the top water, and then we're left with what we call mud, indigo mud. And that we filter, we dry it out. In the old days, they would hang them from cloth bags like this. And then this is the dye cake that we're actually producing. So it's literally like a chunk of, we call it blue gold, but it's blue dye. And we grind those up into a powder, and then we can use them all year long to dye textile products, um, such as a little onesie for babies, like indigo child onesie. Uh, but we also make napkins and all sorts of things. And we think this is a great renaissance opportunity for school art classes that art teachers could be doing dyeing in the classroom. They could even grow the indigo at the school garden. Um, there's interest in you know, group experiences, like we do a lot of um, hands-on workshops, hand dyeing workshops. So lots of, lots of potential to bring indigo back and really for Gullah farmers to grow indigo as a source of income on their own land. So. Very cool. Thank you so much. One question. Yeah. So I understand that the um, indigo was used in some cases to ward off evil spirits and that sort of thing. Is that something that developed because of the industry or was that around before? Uh, well, indigo itself is, is pigment from plants that may involve hundreds of different plant species around the world. So oh, okay. This is just one variety that we grow. So people in China grow it, people in Latin America grow it, people in Europe grow it, so there's all different varieties. But the West African tradition of indigo from that part of the world that came over here with enslaved populations, those traditions are probably rooted in, in African traditions. So, I think they're, they're thousands of years old. The, the production here in the 1700s was really more industrial, just it was a cash crop for yeah. the British mills. So we're bringing it back and we're, we're excited that people can really create their own new culture around indigo because it's such a magical plant. You know, why should we be stuck in this heaviness of the past when anyone could grow it now and, and create a new culture for the future? You can look at our website, Chi Design Indigo, C-H-I. Okay. of 
um, African culture that was brought by the enslaved and the mix of European culture. And this is a tune by an amazing, another amazing jazz artist. It's Charlie Parker, and I didn't know that Charlie Parker wrote a Calypso tune. And this is a tune inspired by the Caribbean. It's called My Little Suede Shoes by Charlie Parker. with the Junkanoo Festival at Brook Green Gardens in Merle's Inlet, South Carolina. I'm kind of bummed that we couldn't do it live. I tried again just for this one song and it just pooped out.
see if we can see any alligators. Gators, but a turtle. Yeah. Toidle. Those little froggies. It's a frog party. Hi. Welcome to the Black Belt Gallery. Thank you. Have you all been in this gallery before? No, actually we were just talking about how we don't think we've ever even seen this part open before. Okay. Can I give you a 30 second explanation? Thank you.
actual graves. Gonna have to do some research on that. See the lights are starting to go up. Who's that? Who's calling? 